Hey everybody, welcome to Journey Through the Generations. I am Philip. Hey guys, I'm Trisha. And we're bringing you an episode today to talk about funeral programs. Yes, funeral programs are one of my favorite resources during um, my research journey. Only a family researcher will get excited <laughs> about funeral programs, right? Uh, yes, you <laughs> only, are absolutely only, yeah, right. Only a genealogist <laughs> is, will say, let's talk about let's, funeral let's programs. Do it. Let's go. Let's do it. Um, <laughs> funeral programs are, I feel, one of the most underrated resources that can be used to get great information about a person's life. Yeah, I mean, it's... It's just something that you don't think about, right? Because it's not in your face all the time. time, So you don't you don't get an ad from about funeral programs (laughs) like you do ancestry, correct, or family search or whatever. So it's not top of mind. Yeah, and it's not um, a a record that's out there on a lot of sites where you can um, like census records or birth records. Um, They haven't really been digitized that much to be able to have access to them. So I think that's another reason why a lot of people don't think about them. Yeah. There's just so much, you know, good information, you know, in those funeral programs. So we'll talk about that. Um, Um, Yeah. So let's just um, remember that funeral programs in the African-American community hold um, great pride in them because it was during a time they started during a time when newspapers weren't publishing information when African-Americans died in communities. They couldn't you didn't have obituaries about black people unless it was a black newspaper. Yeah. And I mean, if I don't know, I just think, of course, it, it's old, older folks who mm-hmm. like keep funeral programs like that. <laughs> and I guess I put myself in, you know, right. older. Um, but, you know, you can look in a box in somebody's house <laughs> or in a drawer yes. or something like that. And there will be funeral programs for Everybody. everybody in the community not, not yeah just the it's family. not just your family it, the dude down the street <laughs> that, that passed away yes there's a funeral program he has nothing to do with your family but he was in the community but and you'll see that in there too yes um so my collection originally my personal collection started um when my best friend justin brown passed away in 1998 i kept his funeral program. And then the very next year, my granny Gladys Stinson Mays passed away and I kept her funeral program and I kept them in a drawer, um, in my, um, bedroom up under my socks. That's where I kept them. And then after that, every funeral that I went to, I would always place the funeral program in that same drawer. And I got that from growing up my granny, went to a lot of funerals and she would always come in um, after the funeral and she would put the um, funeral program in the dining room um, drawer on the bureau. And that's where they were. Yeah. And she's big time in the community, you know, right? she, she, her name carries some weight. So so she was at a lot of funerals. And she was a a teacher Mm -hmm. and she did a lot of stuff in the community. So she Probably went to more funerals than some of the preachers, you know. Yes, town, if not more, so. just as many. And yeah. I don't know if you remember from our earlier episode, we recently um, cleaned out that house that she lived in. And in the dining room bureau were a lot of those old funeral programs. So they were still there where she put them. Yep. And there's going to be some gems yes. in that um in that box oh, yeah. or that stack of funeral programs. Oh, yeah. You just don't know what it is yet. But once we get through, through them, them, yeah. Yeah. There's so gonna that's, be some that's good kind stuff. of the history, my personal collection. Um, but then once I knew I wanted to do this research, the first thing I did was go to her funeral program because I knew I had hers. Um, and you kept it in um, our filing cabinet. You mm. knew exactly where it was. Um, and I got that out to get out information about her life. Um, and then I thought about it and I was like, well, if my granny kept funeral programs like that in a drawer, 
somewhere, then there has to be somebody else in the family that has a bunch of funeral programs that I can access. And I was able to find um, someone in the family who had four big three ring binders of family and community funeral programs back in 2016, I think. Um, And that's when we got the scanner and I went one weekend and he let me scan all of the programs that I wanted. Then they, you know, he didn't want him to leave the house, but um, that's when my, right. (laughs) And that's when my collection really started to take um, place and grow. Yeah. And not, and okay. So if you haven't heard, you know, older episodes of ours, you know, I'm new to the game, you know, I, I'm just now starting, <laughs> but I didn't really keep a bunch of funeral programs mm-hmm. as I was growing up. And quite honestly, and I'm appreciative of this, I really didn't have a ton of people in my family pass away True. when I yeah. was younger. Some did, of course, mm-hmm. but it just wasn't a lot. Mm-hmm. So I thank God for that. But, you know, as I get older now, you know, that circle of life, we're on that we're not on that side we're yet, but we're it. getting to that point to where, you know, our grandparents and our parents are passing away, aunts and uncles and all that good stuff. Um, you know, I'll start picking them up and, but, you know, I think I have a funeral program for my grandmother on my dad's side and Ms. Mays mm-hmm. and a cousin um, and think that's really it. Um, but I'm sure my mama has all the other ones. <laughs> I'm sure she has for, for my grandparents. Right. And, I, I would like to see what her collection looks like. Oh yeah, because she used to go down to the country to she came all from a big family. the um, funerals that she, that was down in the country. She would go to right. Mm-hmm. And so I'm sure I'm sure that she kept those funeral programs yeah. so and you know you didn't necessarily have to go to the funeral to get a funeral program no because some folks they would take 10 and, and hand them out them to out. everybody mail, mail them. them yes so <laughs> that's, just, that's just how we do. What we do that's what we do that's what we do <laughs> um so again these are great it has great information in them they will have the person's birth their death, obviously, it'll have their spouse's information, their children's information, their parents' information. It can have um, the schools that they attended, their education, what they did in the community. It'll have maybe where they worked, if they were in the military. Um, And nowadays, not only will you get a picture on the cover, sometimes they put a collage of pictures on the inside of programs as well. So not only can you have a picture of the deceased, but him with or her with their family as well. An- another thing that we do. <laughs> we love pictures. Yes. You know, funeral programs in our community tend to be a yearbook. You know, it's, <laughs> I mean, it's, you know, you very rarely see funeral programs as just the one, you know, folded open one time. Right. And, and don't let that's it be it. a it, preacher it, or. Oh, somebody you know outstanding in the community it really will be a book yeah and you know and what like trisha said you know we get those um we get those uh those funeral programs and if you have a <laughs> a family member pass away and you're in charge of getting funeral programs that's serious you, business you, you need to print like how many ever people you think is going to show up times you know, three. <laughs> yes. If you're in charge of a funeral program, just know that's serious business. And you now know that people are going to be keeping them and preserving them um, for many, many years to come. So you need to make sure, you know, you're on top of things with it. Yeah. So. All right. Before we move on and talk about um, how to find funeral programs. Um, Let's take a listen to this ad and we'll be right back. Save yourself that trip to the store. Instacart delivers groceries in as fast as one hour. They connect you with personal shoppers in your area to shop and deliver groceries from your favorite stores. If you're like us and shop from more than just one store, 
Instacart allows you to shop all of your favorite stores on a single order. Free delivery on your first order over $35. Follow the link in the episode notes. It lets Instacart know we sent you and it helps support our show. Now back to the show. All right, so next we're going to talk about how to find funeral programs. Yeah, and I think we kind of um, talked about it a little bit already. Um, get with the people in your community and in your family. Um, mm-hmm. I always say, because, you know, I watch a lot of TV and Good Times is one of my favorite shows. I always say, find the weeping Wanda in your community. <laughs> There's always that one person that goes to every funeral in the community has, and they kept those funeral programs. I promise you they did. Listen, let me tell you about Weeping Wanda on the t- <laughs> <laughs> on the TV show Good Times. If you hadn't seen Weeping Wanda, I um, suggest that you go and find that yes. episode wherever it is. But Weeping Wanda was the person who goes to all the funerals, <laughs> you know, in town. Not and, to Chicago. So yeah. that was a big town. And she was the one that it doesn't matter who it was. She might not even known you, but she would go to the funeral and cry. Cry, honey. And she is the one that would get the crying started. Yes, <laughs> so I always won. <laughs> so Weeping Wanda, that was so funny. So <laughs> you, you got to see that. But so. that's what, I mean, but that's really true, especially in our community. There are people who go to funerals, yep. especially in smaller communities. Um, and they go to funerals. They get the funeral program and they, I promise, they're in a shoebox. They're in a bottom drawer. They're at the top of a closet somewhere. They kept those funeral programs. So find that person that everybody knows in the community goes to all the funerals and contact them and say, hey, do you have any funeral programs that you've kept over the years? Can I come see them? Now, they, again, may not want you to leave with them to copy them. So you will have to take pictures with your phone or if you have a a scanning app on your phone, you can use that. Um, But just know if you find that person who has those funeral programs, they have them for a reason. They are going to be protective of them. Um, So you need to put them at ease and let them know that you are going to take care of them. Yeah. And, you know, we talk about for when we're talking about beginners, Mm -hmm. you know, me being a beginner in this as well. We always say the first thing you should do is interview your family. Yes. Interview the elders. Talk to the grandparents or the great grandparents or whatever. Talk to them while they're still here Yes, and get their stories. Well, one of the things you can ask in that interview that is, is right. do you have any funeral programs that I can look at? And they probably I'm do. I'm sure they do. And they would give them to you so you can get information mm-hmm. off of or, you know, ask for pictures, you yes. know, just like you would ask, you know, for all this other mm-hmm. information, you know, I would add, tell you to add to your notes Asking for funeral programs. Right. You're going to ask for that information because they're going not going to have census records. They're probably not going to have, you know, a lot of birth records and things like that. So this is the kind of information that they would have tangible that you can look at and see. And it's like a story on paper when you look at a funeral program. Yeah. And you just think about any funeral program that you've seen. Mm hmm. When you talk about the way we do funeral programs, uh-huh. we list everybody's name in there until you get to the great grand n- nieces and nephews. Hosta. That's when we a host of <laughs> <laughs> we we love yeah, it. Uh, we the do. host of other right. families or whatever, yes. but they list everyone and they also list their spouses. Mm-hmm. And folks get mad if their name you know, isn't in a funeral program. Or if it's spelled wrong. Yeah, or I'm spelled just wrong, you. you better get on. I'm your... telling you, funeral programs, that's serious business. It really is. But not only do you get information about the deceased and his family, you also will get um, the cemetery information where they are buried or, you know, unless they're cremated. You will also find out information about the funeral home that yep. um, did the funeral. And there, that's another avenue of records that you can find. We'll, you know, talk about that in a different episode, but you'll have that information for later research. You will also find out different people in the community, pallbearers. 
you'll know who the minister was that um, did the eulogy. Mm-hmm. And typically if there's, you know, a favorite song in the family, then they, it's usually someone close to the family that's singing it, either a relative or a close family friend. So when I say a funeral program is a wealth of information of that person, you really are getting a glimpse of their life. Yeah. It, I mean, it just, you know, it, te- it gives you so much information that is right there if you just ask the question Mm -hmm. and with all the information in funeral programs it would take you i don't know months Months. to find yeah on an ancestry or or family family search and piecing it all together yeah piecing all that together when it they have it right there Mm -hmm. yeah (laughs) so if you have you know, can't find your weeping Wanda of the community. Um, you can always go to the local um, funeral home. They sometimes will all have a, have copies of the funeral programs of the funerals that they performed. So they would have them also churches. That's a good option um, because a lot of times the community, if that's your church home, that's where you're um, funeral is so then they keep a copy um at the church as well so they probably will have a a good number of funeral programs um also you can check the local libraries or um the special collections because sometimes uh, this is what i plan to do with my collection is to donate it to a library or a repository. Um, so you just never know. Contact the local library and ask the question, do you have a collection of funeral programs from the community? Um, and you can go and look at them. Yeah. And I mean, I think that's just a the good thing to do because you never know who else in your family might be researching. Mm-hmm. And so or in the community. Yeah. So it'd be good if you can find a library or a cultural center or somewhere in your community to um, to give or donate copies yes. of it to mm-hmm. not not the last one you have, <laughs> but donate right. them to someone else so that they can start doing research and yeah. figure out, you know, who their family is. And so because that's yeah. how I found the lot of mine was at the Butler Center in the James Morgan collection. He has over a thousand funeral programs from my hometown in Newport. Um, so I was able to find my own family in his collection. He's not related to us, but he was big in the church um, and he did a lot of printing for families and things like that. And actual he wrote pro, um, programs for families so he would always keep one if he did one so um, and he has passed away and his family donated his um, research and all of his programs and everything to the Butler Center so that's where I was able to find a lot of my family yeah which is really cool and so you know with uh, Roots Tech just happened not too long ago mm-hmm. Um, I really started researching more, right? Especially during the conference. Mm-hmm. But I would, I was just researching, and then I called my mom because I saw a name on Ancestry that didn't um, resonate with me. I had never seen it mm-hmm. before, and then I saw a name um, for my grandfather that I'd never seen it like that. Mm-hmm. You know. Um, you know, his name is Jasper, but in this particular record, it said JP, mm-hmm. but his middle initial is not P, it's okay. G. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, that kind of thing kind of threw me off. And I was like, Verify okay, I need to call, um, I need to call mama and <laughs> figure out <laughs> yeah. what's going on. But when I was talking to her too, she said that she was going to pull out some you know, information and stuff for me for the next time I'm down there. Um, I can look through it and bring it back with me. I'm sure she's going to let me bring it back. I don't know. I'm her favorite. I'm, a, I'm her favorite child. I don't so know. it doesn't matter. I'm her favorite. I'll take the scanner just in case. <laughs> well, yeah, we'll take it. But 
I'm just telling you, she's going to let me bring them because I'm her favorite. Okay. So that's, that's what's going to happen. But I'm Watch. sure there will be funeral programs in that information that she shares with you. Yeah. I mean, I'm finding information. And when I'm looking for stuff, I get um, I get kind of cynical about <laughs> the, some of the information yeah. I find because I don't want to get a bad piece of data mm-hmm. or something. And then it sends me down an incorrect a path. Hole. And mm-hmm. I'm now looking for other folks, family members and not mine. <laughs> and, not yours. and that scares me half to death. But and you would trust a funeral program from your mother. Yeah, because that information came straight from the family, mm-hmm. not from, you know. Who knows who, who owned yeah. ancestry. Yeah, and somebody transcribed information and, you know, a lot of different stuff. Now, I mean, I I understand their records. They Mm -hmm. are official records, and I get that. But But it's different when you it comes from your family or the community. mm -hmm. I mean, there's a trust there that you can't um, get anywhere else. Yep. And I've heard uh, so many stories from other researchers about, you know, oh, they thought, you know, their family member was this person, mm-hmm. but, you know, maybe they put incorrect information on the document or, right. you know, no Had one knew name. or whatever. Yeah. And so that's what scares me about about this. Okay. So, you know, anyway, uh, for but for funeral programs. Yeah, I'm going to hopefully get, you know, a lot of those from mm-hmm. um, from mama and I'll be able to either verify the information that you have already Mm -hmm. or add new stuff to it. I feel like you're going to do both. Um, Probably. Yeah. So once you have started your collection of funeral programs, you want to preserve them and make sure that they stay in good condition. Cause again, I know people who, you know, keep them in shoe boxes that's not the best thing to do for paper records. So you want to organize them. Um, What I have done with my collection is I um, got some of those heavy duty sheet protectors and three ring binders. And I have um, a binder of funeral programs that are um, organized alphabetically. And those are community people, um, friends and family, people from Newport, things like that. And then I have a binder that is just for my family. And I have labeled the outside of them both. Um, One says funeral programs, um, Jackson County community. And the other one says funeral programs, surnames, Mays, Denson, Hatchet, Wright, Skipper, things like that. Um, So anybody looking at them will know this is what these programs are and where they came from. Yeah. And I I know we're talking about funeral programs, but don't skip over newspaper obituaries. No, no, you're right. So um, so if you see an obituary in your research um, before you get a hold of funeral programs, right. get that mm-hmm. article or Absolutely. that obituary if you can. It's not going to be as detailed as a funeral program obituary would be, but it may just have that information that in it, a dates, you know, immediate, names. immediate family names. Mm-hmm. Those kinds of things. Right. Get a copy of those and you can put it with, with the, the funeral, funeral program, program right. that you have. That is correct. We are not saying don't ever use newspaper obituaries. Those are a wealth of information as well. But this one is this episode is focusing basically on funeral programs. Yeah, but they go hand in it. hand. Yes, mm-hmm. they do. They go hand in hand. So um, you just want to make sure that you are preserving them and um for me, it helped when I talked about that I was wanting to get them. So once I got the word out that that is something that I wanted and I you know, was collecting, then it was like they just fell at my feet and everywhere I went, somebody was trying to give me a funeral program. Yeah. So communicate what you need. And that's something that I don't do enough of. Yep. But once I started talking about it and posting it on Facebook and every time I was with some family members talking about it, then they would reach out to me about funeral programs. Yeah. Don't, just don't do one thing, you know, talk to your family members, your elders. Yes. 
for sure. But use social media. Put it out there on your Facebook page or your Instagram or whatever um, and put on there what last names you're looking for right, because yeah. you may have a friend um, or something. They see it and go, oh, yeah, I have a Jones in my family. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe it's I'll, you know, let's get look with my together mama and see what she got or something. You just never, you just never know. So I can't you never know. I can't express how much <sighs> that in itself has helped my collection grow and people now know that is what I do and so again they come to me with them do you want these I found these do you want these of course I do Mm -hmm. yeah do do it and do it often so people can remember yeah you don't just just know I mean you probably already know that not everyone in the family or just out in the you know general community um, is into genealogy Correct. or family research. Yeah, and I tell them this is a niche. It and is, so, and so it, I have said it doesn't matter if they're related to me or not. It doesn't matter if they are from Newport or not. If you know somebody with a funeral home, a funeral program collection, and you don't know what to do with it, contact me. I will figure it out. I will find a library to donate it to. I will organize it. I will get it together or help you do it. Um, just do not throw them away. So I hope this information that uh, we talked about here, you know, it provides a little bit um, better understanding of the importance of um, funeral programs, mm-hmm. even though it's not a quote unquote <laughs> official document. No, it's not but, an official document. But we hope that it's something that uh, provides you a little bit more information and desire to talk to your family members and find more funeral programs, right? Yes. And I hope that if this is something that you are starting um, and your collection is growing, I hope this podcast has helped you um, to learn how to organize it, um, give you some ideas about um, what to do with it in the future. So we appreciate you guys for listening. Um, Please uh, subscribe to the podcast. Um, you can listen to it wherever you get uh, your um, your podcast. You can also listen to it on the blog, um, journeythroughthegenerations.com. Uh, make sure you tell a family member, your friends who's interested in genealogy and family research that we're here um, doing this podcast. And we're also on Facebook and um, on Twitter. So follow us over there. Appreciate you guys. Thanks, everybody. All right.